X, music mixed by Diesel. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. It was 40 years ago this week when New York State police uh, raided the Attica prison in upstate New York, ending a, a, a prison uprising to protest inhumane conditions at the facility. For four days, the unarmed prisoners held 39 prison guards hostage. On September 13th, New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller ordered armed state troopers to subdue the rebellion. Troopers then shot indiscriminately over 2,000 rounds of ammunition. 39 men would die, 29 prisoners and 10 uh, prison guards. After the shooting stopped, police beat and tortured scores more of the prisoners. Newly uncovered audio recordings reveal President Richard Nixon enthusiastically supported the violent operation when he spoke by telephone to New York Governor Rockefeller on the day of the raid. Rockefeller confides in the president that before the raid, he thought it was possible as many as 300 prisoners could be killed, but went ahead with the operation anyway. This tape was obtained by University of New Hampshire at Manchester historian Teresa Lynch. I have Governor Rockefeller for you, sir. Mr. President, I know you've had a hard day, but uh, I want you to know that I just back you to the hilt. And I, I was sitting here talking to Bob Altman. I, I uh, didn't get your call because I've had a cabinet meeting, and then I had a meeting with business leaders right afterwards, and I've been oh, I just got out. But uh, the courage you showed and the judgment in not granting amnesty, it was right, and I don't care what the hell the papers or anybody else says. Throughout the tapes, President Nixon discusses the racial component of the uprising, describing the prison rebellion as, quote, basically a black thing. Nixon would go on to erroneously state that all of the victims of the crackdown were African American, downplaying the multiracial leadership within Attica at the time of the uprising. Tell me this. Is this a, are these primarily blacks that you're doing? Oh, yes. This, there was, the whole thing was led by the blacks. Are all the prisoners that were killed blacks? Got that report, but I have to. I would yeah. say just offhand, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, we did it though only when they were in the process of murdering the guards, or when they were attacking our people as they came in to get the guards. You had to do it. And otherwise, we were captured all the cell blocks and so forth without uh, shooting a shot. And no troopers uh, were wounded. One of them, well, one of them was in the leg. But uh, only one trooper was wounded. Good. That's right. Good. It really was Good. a beautiful operation. That was newly uncovered audio recordings of President Richard Nixon speaking by phone with New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller the day of the Attica raid. To discuss these tapes, we're joined now by the historian who shared them with Democracy Now!, Teresa Lynch, is at the University of New Hampshire, Manchester, obtained the Nixon-Rockefeller tapes on Attica, and together with her colleague Scott Christensen, helped publicize them. Um, when you have the president of the United States, Nixon, the governor of New York at the time, Rockefeller, talking about prisoners attacked the guards. The fact is, it turned out that it wasn't prisoners who killed any of the guards. It was the state trooper raid on that day, September 13, 1971, that killed all the prisoners and guards, all 39. Um, talk about the significance, uh, Teresa Lynch, of these tapes and how you actually uncovered them. Well, I think the tapes illustrate how Nixon was willing to back Rockefeller publicly and within the White House. I obtained the tapes um, in 2004 from the National Archives Records Administration in Maryland. The tapes also demonstrate how Nixon and Rockefeller were willing to make assumptions. And more broadly, they show how they were willing to flex their muscles and be tough on crime. They're also a window into the intersection between 
politics and power. I want to go to another clip. Um, Nixon and Rockefeller discussing how to manage the media coverage of Attica. In this clip, they mention Tom Wicker, the former political reporter columnist for The New York Times. What the hell is Tom Wicker doing in this thing? Well, you won't believe it. Uh, we, had a, we had a committee of citizens invited by the prisoners, 32 of them. Tom Wicker was one. Uh, we had that uh, Kunzler, that lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. We had uh, the head of the Mau Mau's. You know, a motley crowd. Yeah. And some good people, some legislators. And uh, Tom Wicker was so emotional in this thing that it was unbelievable. Which side? Oh, on their side. Always, always. I know. I know. See, I had at the end. They were putting the pressure yesterday on me all day to go up there. Ended up because everything else had failed. And did you go? Of course not. I wasn't of course not. But I had to talk to these guys, Wicker and all these people on the phone. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, look, I go up there. We can't give amnesty. The next thing is, well, we let them go if you'll just come into the courtyard. Yeah. You know. Yeah. With in front of all the men. Well, did Wicker was he recommending amnesty? Oh yes. Oh God. God. Oh, yeah. oh you, you listen. This is a great. This is this separated the sheep from. The uh, this uh, in the uh, that was Governor Rockefeller and President Nixon in this discussion that they were having about uh, Tom Wicker. Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, in terms of when you discovered the tapes, uh, because it appears that Nixon tapes keep appearing, uh, uh, how, uh, where precisely uh, did you discover these tapes and no one had seen them before? Uh, and uh, also, could you talk about the, the, the way that Attica changed uh, Nelson Rockefeller, uh, 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 Professor Lynch, how, how, um, how Attica changed Nelson Rockefeller, who had always been seen as a moderate— Republican. In fact, there was a a Rockefeller Republican uh, wing of the uh, of the party, and how this began to actually change him and and transform forever uh, his legacy. Well, I think it changed Rockefeller on yes. the one hand, um, and to some it was a feather in his cap. Let me go to another clip. Um, the tapes revealing that Nixon believed Attica would serve as a deterrent. This um, In this clip, Nixon speaks to John Ehrlichman, counsel and assistant to the president for domestic affairs. Nixon downplays the idea that the Black Panthers will launch reprisal attacks after Attica. Did you have some ideas that we ought to take some preventive actions in some of the federal prisons? Well, we've already alerted the uh, uh, prisons through the attorney general. Right. And uh, so they're all on uh, kind of a standby basis. Well, I would think, John, that what happened in New York, rather than stimulating more, is likely to, uh, you know, have an effect that could be quite the opposite deterrent. Well, the, um, uh, the concern that Rockefeller had was that uh, Seal and some of the Black Panthers who had been up there came out and said to the press, if any harm comes to any of these prisoners, why, we're going to blow up other prisons around the country. I see. That's what he showed you this morning. Right. You know, so I passed that along to the attorney general, who I turn and alert him. They won't assist. I, I, I don't think they will. I may be wrong, but uh, I think Rockefeller had to do what he did. That was President Nixon speaking with John Haldeman. Um, Professor Teresa Lynch, your final comments on what you discovered in these tapes. Well, I think the tapes uh, resonate still with many Americans. They do fuse issues of race, class, and power. And I think they're an interesting window into the Nixon White House. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Teresa Lynch, historian at the University of New Hampshire, Manchester, obtained the Nixon Rockefeller tapes on Attica um, together with her uh, colleague Scott Christensen. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace.